Because uh, you're a pretty raucous crowd here, and uh, there are many, many, many more people here than we thought would be here. So, so I'm extremely excited to see all of you, and um, I would love to read for you, but it doesn't feel like the right moment. If you want me to come read somewhere, I will come read. Call us up, I'll come read. All right? Uh, and maybe I'll do a little reading on our website, accidentalamerican.us, and you can watch that. So instead, I'm just going to do a very quick reflection on how this book came to be and the effect that it had on my life to be um, so intimately involved with this organization over the last, uh, for me, it's been six years. When I met Rock New York in the fall of 2002, I was coming out of a career, an organizing career of my own. It had lasted about 15 years, and I had worked from my early 20s, actually my teens on, uh, into my 30s. And as much as I had accomplished in that time, by the time 2002 came around, I was frankly frustrated. I was disillusioned and a bit disaffected with the community organization. I was burnt out and I was having a hard time seeing its value. I wanted something bigger with bigger impact and something more important. That was what was in my head. I need something more important. <laughs> Nevertheless, when I got to their office to meet Saru and she introduced me to Mamdu and to their other colleagues, I was attracted to this group of people. Uh, any of you who have been around them know that you really can't be with them and not be attracted, not feel uh, the love that holds them together, not take notice of the transnational nature of their alliance, uh, not be impressed with the fact that they run meetings in three or four different languages, and not recognize uh, the gumption and the um, the fire that they had inside that kept them together and kept them going. So I could see right away, I would say in the first three minutes that I was with them, I could see this is a group of people who are going to produce some kind of amazing story. I don't know what the story is going to be, but I know that one year after September 11th, that story is going to tell us a lot about what it means to be an American in this time and what America's relationship to the world is. And so I asked for permission to begin reporting and to work on the book, and I got it. And I'm so glad that I did. It has perhaps been among the most transformative uh, relationships and experiences of my life. And I personally have learned some very important lessons. I learned that it's by embracing the people who are the most marginal, the most vilified, the most hated in a society, by embracing those people, that's how you build an inclusive society that works for everybody. I learned that in my heart. I also learned that grief and trauma affect different people in different ways. For some people, it stops you cold, it shuts you down, and it makes you shut other people out. It makes you clo draw a line around the memory of that trauma and freeze that memory so that no other interpretations are possible, so that no other meaning can be drawn from it other than the meaning of um, the sadness that it brings to your life and, and the victimization that it made out of your life. I've learned that that's one reaction. There's a different reaction uh, some people take their grief and trauma and it drives them to move forward. It expands their empathy. It makes them grow their community. It gives them a way to relate to other people. Those are two distinct uh, um, reactions that people have to trauma. And the way that you react depends on who is around you and how you see your place in the world. I also learned that even for people who are desperate who are starving, survival is not enough. Survival by itself isn't enough. Dignity, family, adventure, language, laughter, music, food, love, those are the things that make immigrants more than just a pair of arms available to work. Those are the things that make immigrants human beings who make a full human contribution to wh whatever place they're in. They make an economic, a political, a cultural, and a social contribution. In the collective grief and trauma that Americans have gone through after September 11th, 
Many of us have lost our sense of hospitality, our sense of being a part of the world. We've tried to shut ourselves off from the world. We've forgotten that it's only by embracing that world that we can find the way to our own survival, our own security, to our own liberation. For so many reasons in so many different ways, all of them grounded in having the courage to act, the Restaurant Opportunities Center stand as a symbol of how a new city, a new nation, a new world can be built. So I'm asking you tonight to join me in doing as much as you can to support these organizations as they go about helping us all build those things that we know are possible to build. We know they're possible because we can see them in the micro, we can see them in the local, we can see them in this restaurant and in this organization. So if they're possible here, that means they're possible everywhere. They're possible in the United States, they're possible in Mexico, they're possible in Morocco, and they're possible in India, the place that I come from. So Saru ran down a long list of ways that you can help to support Rock New York and Rock United. And I'm just going to add my own voice to that. So if you bought a book already, that's great. Pretend your book cost $100 instead of $25. Maybe it cost $200. Maybe it cost $500. Pay as much for that book as you would like to pay and can afford to pay. If your employer matches gr gifts that you make, please ask them to match the gift you make tonight. If your employer doesn't do matching gifts, well, match your gift yourself. <laughs> I'm going to make a gift of $100 and I'm going to match it so that it's $200. I want to thank all of you so much for coming. The fact that you're here uh, reminds me that Sometimes you only know what's to be done in your heart, in your gut. It's not in your brain that you know. But if you follow your heart and that gut, your brain will also get the message eventually. And your feet will get it too. I appreciate you so much for coming. We're going to be here signing books for anyone who hasn't been able to get their book signed yet. Um, onward.